Welcome back to the Photoshop CS5 for architecture students. In this video we're going to look a little bit more closely at the way layers work and how the layer palette um, functions. Now I'm going to draw our attention to our section through here. Now as we know um, with the sections to sort of give a little bit more depth um, to the drawing itself and make it a bit more legible these elements here which are actually in the elevation of the section I want to sort of drop them back to a slightly lighter line weight but I want to do it in such a way that I can adjust all of the the weight of the line in an even manner now I'm going to do this by sort of cutting up this layer and modifying it slightly. Now if I go to my layer 1 which is the section now it is a little bit confusing I guess um, trying to navigate between these layers particularly when we start to get quite a number of layers in here so before I go much further I'm actually going to rename my layers to reflect the drawings um, as they actually are. So look, I'm going to control zero, go to extents. Now my layer one, I'm just going to click, double click on the name of the layer and I'm going to type in a new name for that layer and I'm going to call the section, funnily enough, the section. Layer two, which is actually the ground layer plan, we can see there. I'm going to call that ground plan and layer 3 turn that on and off yes that's the top one there I'm going to call that level 1 plan okay that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to navigate around our presentation now I've zoomed in again to to our section and I'm going to go back to that action now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this section layer and make modifications to it, erase parts on one of the layers and try and get that effect where some of the section looks like it's in the background. So here I'm going to go to duplicate layer and how I did that, I just right click on section, go to duplicate layer or I can click on the little fly out in the top right hand corner of that panel and go again duplicate layer. Now I'm going to call this one section background. Go OK and there we go we've got two versions of pretty much the same thing. Now I'm going to close off the section below so I can see what I'm doing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to retain just those things, those lines that are in the background that's here, here, these ones, these ones here and I'm going to erase the rest of the lines. Now to erase it I'm going to use a combination I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool now that's in the left hand tool menu. I'm going to select that so I can quickly cut out parts of the drawing that I don't want. So the section within that marquee, when I press the delete key, will be gone. Okay, control D to remove that marquee and I'm just going to go around and delete all of the line work that's in the foreground. Now here I'm going to use my eraser tool as a block and I'm just going to clean up the rest 
of the bits of line that I missed in using the marquee. Now looking at that, it seems that I've got most of that line work which is in the background cropped out of the image and visible. Now I'm going to go back, select the section, background section itself. I'm going to turn off section background and what I'm going to do is kind of the opposite. On this section here I'm going to erase all of those bits of line work that are in the distance in elevation. Now I'm going to use the erase tool for this and just carefully go through and delete that line work. Now you can see I've gone through I've deleted all of that background line work and if you can see if I turn on my section background turn it on, turn it off, you can see there I've now manipulated the section so that it's in two halves. Now what this allows me to do is now with the section background I can adjust the opacity and make that section background a good bit lighter than the line work around it. Now the brilliant thing is, is that because I've got it on a separate layer and I'm adjusting it with this slider, I can sort of downgrade or lighten up the lines in a fairly even manner. So we can see now we're starting to get a bit of depth to this section. Now there are other things, I'm just zooming out to the extents, control zero. There are other things to sort of note with the uh, way that layers work. Now we've seen before how this pull down menu changes the way that our layer behaves. Now some of these things are fairly benign like the multiply which we can see, I'll just pick the move tool, in effect changes our drawing like it's on a piece of tracing paper. But there are other, I guess, more um, dramatic changes. And if we go, for example, look at this difference, what it does is it actually almost reverses um, the layer. So what was white on the layer is now black, and what was black line becomes clear. Now, if you notice here, the order of the layers is actually important as well because it's like a stack of sheets of paper, one on top of the other. So you can see here my ground plan is between my section and my level 1 plan. So if I drag my plan across on top of my section, it will overlap and cover the section because it is over the top of the section background. However, if I come to my upper level plan, level 1 plan, you notice that this piece of paper is actually sliding underneath that level 1 plan because that level 1 plan is higher up in the order than the ground level plan. So I'm just going to swap the order and you can see what happens. Now to do that I'm going to highlight my level 1 plan using my left mouse button. I'm going to drag my level 1 plan down the order and immediately what you can see is now my ground level plan floats over the top. Now I'm going to go back in time to bring us back to this instance through here. Now one thing to note about the history, you can see how I move back and forth, the history is limited to a certain number of operations before we can get right back to early stages. Now the number of, of stages of, of history that Photoshop remembers 
is something that's actually set in the preferences and we're going to go back and change that and just see how we change it now under the edit in the application pull down go to preferences general now to change the number of inst number of stages of history I guess we go to performance and we can change the number of history states currently it's it's set at 20 which is reasonable but as soon as we get more sophisticated layering um, it's probably a bit limited now we can bring that right up probably to 70 now that is going to have the effect of slowing the performance down a little bit because it's going to have to remember um, a bit more what it's done in the past so if your computer is struggling um, to run Photoshop it's probably wise to keep that history state down a bit more but if your computer can cope with it you know give yourself a little bit more of a buffer and go OK so the way that this is shaping up is still OK so just in, in summary what we have learnt in terms of the layers is how to rename some of the properties and how we change the properties of layers but more importantly how layer order affects our composition now if you stick around in the next video we're going to go through a bit of color so we'll see you then